sent me a postcard from New York. And she wrote, Nessie, one day you should see the lights in this city. When I finally moved to New York in 1984, all what I had with me was two pieces of luggages and this postcard. So what do you put in these two bags when you are leaving all your life behind? I had a book by Pablo Neruda where there was a poem that every time I read it, he describes the cloud so beautifully that I felt that I was under almost touching it. It had to come. Then obviously some clothes, paints and brushes, and of course the postcard of my mother. That was all. But I had a dream. I wanted the life as an artist. Like in the movies I have seen back home about Hemingway and the lost generation, where they wanted to live the bohemian life. They were young and they have a lot of passions of their own. But it was totally unreasonable. I was a psychology major, missing only three months from getting my degree. <laughs> but I had a revelation that I was not going to be a good psychologist. <laughs> so I stand up, I remember very clear, and I walk outside, look up the sky, and saw these beautiful clouds, and decided that it was over. It was so sudden, I left to New York in like less than a week. You could imagine how my parents felt, very hurt and in dismay because of my impulsiveness. But I wanted to live this romantic life as an artist. So once I was in New York, I didn't want to go to college to study art. I wanted to study art organically. So I went to the Art Students League and to the Met and I studied composition and intellectual knowledge from books that I keep, you know, pick up on every day on my way. So I have made it to New York physically, but I had this really burning desire that I wanted to share my work with as an artist with other people. So I decided that I had to do something that it was very close to my heart and to my culture. For example, the floating islands in Lake Titicaca. These floating islands are located in the southeast in Peru. The Uros are pre-Inca people that live in these islands for over 3,000 years using these giant plants named Totora reeds to use everything. They build houses, they build boats, and watch towers. The Uros knows very well that if they don't maintain these islands, they will get rotten, they will sink, and they will cease to exist. This experience of observing and being with the Uros made me realize of life very ephemeral. And I was thinking, would it be wonderful if we all of us, at some point of our life, have the opportunity to make the changes and let it go of things? This is, oopsie, it was a little delay. This is Uro's house. This is the first piece I did in the Uro series. I have just arrived from Leti Titicaca and I had the opportunity to collaborate with the Armory Show and Times Square Alliance. Oopsie. Sorry, something happened with the slides. It got a little stuck. We'll try it again. OK, there we go. This is um, Uro's house. I wanted to make a point to make it the shape very organic. So this will stay and stand in contrast with all the vertical buildings that they were all around. Also, I wanted to make sure that I was bringing my own interpretation of the Uros house that I saw in Leti Titicaca all the way in the center of Times Square. It was a dream that I had since I just arrived in, the, in 1984. Uh, 
let me share with you some other uh, pieces in the Uro series and other collaborations.
talk about uh, how I truly make an effort to connect with my viewer. So we live in these uh, daily lives of us using their smartphones. We always are tweeting or posting images in our Instagram or our Facebook. So for two, uh, with these in mind, I wanted to create truly a connection with my viewer, with people. So when you go to see my installations, you, there's going to be something for everybody. It's going to be either you're going to be interested in the space, in the form, in the shape, in the materials that are going to be used. For some of them, it might be the electrical hardware or the sounds of those beautiful power supplies. So I wanted to create, from beginning to end, this immersing, like large, living organism with you and the piece becomes actually one. In my most uh, latest work, Breathless Maiden Lane, I had the uh, opportunity to do this work in downtown uh, Manhattan, in the windy streets of the financial district in New York. With Breathless Maiden Lane, I wanted, as its name sounds, I wanted the light to explode and to burst into the streets, and I wanted to grab my passerby because I wanted them to make them turn, look, and make them think. Let me share with you this breathless meddling. I didn't put music on this one.